It was the coldest month of the year in Japan and it was the year end. There lived a poor couple, Takashi and Aiko, in a small town. Aiko was counting her savings for the New Year celebration. That could bring fortune to their house. Oh, oh sweetheart, I don't see that we have enough money to buy any rice cakes for the New Year. Don't worry, honey. There must be some way that we could figure out. Without eating rice cakes for the new year, we will not get any good fortune. Wait, I got an idea. Aiko left the place and came back with her wedding kimono. Please sell this and get us rice cakes for the new year. But honey, this is your wedding kimono. Oh, sweetheart, don't feel bad. God is going to bless us with good fortune anyway. Listening to Aiko's words, Takeshi left the house to sell the kimono for rice cakes. When Takeshi was walking down the snowing streets, he came across the statue of God Jizo on his way. Oh, Almighty! I don't have any offerings for you, but while returning, I promise to offer you a rice cake," said Takeshi and left the place. On his way to the market, he came across five other statues of different gods and he made the same promise to each of them. Later that day at the market, I have not sold a single fan yet. How on earth will I buy my wedding kimono? <laughs> Here, miss, you can have this kimono for your wedding. But sir, I don't have any money in return. It's okay. Please take this as my gift for your marriage. How kind! You can have my entire basket of fans in return. Sometime later. Beautiful fans for you. Beautiful fans for you. The girl was right. Nobody would buy fans in this season. I should be able to trade these fans for the bell. It looks perfect for the New Year celebration. Takeshi traded the fans for the beautiful bell. And some time later... Sir, are you interested in trading this bell for my bamboo hats? Well, I would love to. Takeshi traded the bell for the hats and left for home. On his way, he came across a statue of God, to whom he had made the promise. God, please forgive me for I couldn't bring you rice cakes. Rather, have this hat and it will protect you from the snow. He placed the hat on the statue's head and he did the same for the other four. Finally, when he came across the statue of God Jizo, Oh, Almighty, I've run out of bamboo hats. Please accept my hat instead. And he returned home. <laughs> you are very kind, sweetheart, said Aiko on hearing what happened. And that night, the couple went to sleep. <gasps> Did you hear any sound? Who would have come here at this time? Huh? Huh? To their surprise, Gods, please bless us! The gods blessed Takeshi and Aiko and left them a big bowl of rice cakes that would last for days. And the couple had a wonderful new year. Kids, what have you learned from the story? 
Despite being poor, Takeshi was so generous that the gods themselves came to his house to bless the couple. So kids, don't forget to be kind and generous to one another all the time. Once upon a time, so long ago, no one remembers when and where, there lived a young man named Paco. It is said, Paco had a rough day back then. I feel worn out completely. No more I can take this. Paco got himself seated under the shade and unsealed his bottle of soup. My chicken man chow soup. At last. I wish nobody comes here so that there would be no need for me to share my yummy soup with the lovely bits of chunky chicken. He hurried to drink the soup all himself. And there came a raccoon. Hey, Paco! Ah! What do you want, raccoon? What's that in your hand? No way I'm going to share this with you. Go away! But I'm hungry. It has been two days since I ate. So am I. Go right away. Well, according to our culture, you should be sharing this anyway. Ah, I see where this is going. Okay, okay. Here is a deal. We shall go for a running race. If you win, I would share my soup. Or if I win, you have to walk out of this right away. Doesn't look fair. You are a human and you have long legs, unlike me. Watch your words, raccoon. Okay, I would tie a huge rock to my back so that it would slow me down. Paco found himself a rock and tied it to his back. And both Paco and raccoon were ready at the start line. One, two, and three! The race began and Paco ran as fast as he can to save his soup from being shared. After running for a while, I should have left him far behind, said Paco blissfully. And later, What if he's ahead of me? This huge thing might be holding me back. Paco got rid of the rock and kept running even faster and finished the race at the point where he started. No! My soup! It's missing! Paco looked around for his soup and found the raccoon having it all himself in the middle of the river. Hey! Raccoon! That's mine! The soup was all alone, so I took it and swam through the water while you were busy running, so it belongs to me. How about some sharing at least? Definitely. Next time onward. The raccoon began to drink the soup and Paco learned a lesson. Kids, what have you learned from the story? So kids, because of his greediness, Paco had to lose his entire soup. So, never be greedy and always be ready to share your things with others who are in need. Once upon a time, very long ago, a strange thing happened on a high mountain. There lived a young man named Hung with his wife, Yen. The poor couple owned a little house and a star fruit tree in front of it. They were dependent on the star fruit tree for their living. It was the harvest season and one day. Jeepers, creepers! What a big raven! Hey! Shoo! Shoo! Get away from my tree! Get away! I said get away! Stop trying!
throwing stones, young lady. How can you talk? You're a raven. I can, young lady. Okay, now get away. This tree is all we got for living. Here's a deal. If you let me and my folks eat the star fruits, I will replace it with gold. What? Trust me. Tomorrow, I will be here and you or your husband can come along with me carrying a bag. All right, all right. The big raven and its folks ate almost every star fruit on the tree. And that night, Yen explained about the incident to Hung. It's okay, sweetheart. <laughs> the next day, Hung and Yen awaited the raven. Husband Hung would join you. Okay, get on my back. The raven flew through the clouds and reached a cave on a hilltop. Hide. Hung quickly filled half of his bag and went back to Raven. Why is your bag only half filled? This gold should be sufficient enough for me. Now we shall go back to my home. Hung and Yen invested the money in farming and made a good profit out of it. They also regularly fed the ravens with their star fruits and thanked them. The news of Hung's success reached the ears of his jealous brother, Dung. Servants, plant star fruit trees all over my garden and let the raven feed on them. The servants planted star fruit trees as per the order of Dung, and soon many ravens fed on them. And it all happened once again. What a day! The greedy dung filled his bag as much as he can until the bag began to overflow. Hey, we shall leave. You don't decide that for me. Now we'll go. Later. You can fly, that's why I fed you. And not so late, Raven lost his balance and the dung slipped and fell along with his gold and died. 
kids, what have you learned from the story? Thang was content that he was able to prosper, but Dung was not, which led to his death. So kids, he is rich who is satisfied. Far, far away, beyond all sorts of countries, seas and rivers, there stood a beautiful empire ruled by a brutish emperor. There lived a poor young farmer named Chang, who was generous and kind despite his poverty. The farmer had an excellent talent. Every day after his work, he used to sit under a tree and draw beautiful sketches on the mud with little twigs. One day when he was fast asleep, there appeared the wish fairy in his dreams. have pleased me. I will offer you a magic brush that will bring drawings to life only if you sketch," said the fairy and placed the magic brush next to him and vanished. Not so late. <sighs> if only my dream was real. What? Tell me that I'm not dreaming. Soon, Chang went on to test his magic brush. He drew some delicious food and to his surprise. Oh heavens, the magic brush is real. From that day, he drew a lot of food and clothes. He helped the poor and the needy of the empire. The news spread like a wildfire and the brutish emperor came to know about Chang and his magic brush. Without my knowledge, go get him here now. The very day, the soldiers brought Chang to the emperor's castle. I have heard about your ability. Sketch a massive golden mountain or you shall be sentenced to death. Your imperial majesty, if I do so, will you set me free? Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Not even in your dream. You are my slave forever, Chang," said the emperor mockingly. Chang became sad on hearing the emperor and quickly he came up with an idea. There he drew a big sea instead of a golden mountain. Why did you sketch that? I said golden mountain now. Pardon me, your imperial majesty. He now drew a golden mountain far away in the sea. Again, you have spoiled it. Sketch me a big ship now. So did Chang. The emperor got on the ship and traveled towards the golden mountain. Chang, who was on the seashore, sketched dark clouds and tornado in the middle of the sea and it came out real. The 
brutish emperor got stuck in the mid sea and he drowned to his death from then chang was set free and he continued to help the poor and the needy kids what have you learned from the story the brutish emperor in the story drowned to his death because of his greediness and impolite nature whereas chang was rewarded for his kindness and talent so kids remember we grow by helping others grow long ago as only the very old ones remember there lived a hard working stone cutter in a small hut by the side of rocky mountains Despite being poor, the stone cutter was able to feed himself 3 times a day and lead a happy life. One day, he had to pass by a house of a wealthy man, which was made up of shining stones. The stone cutter stopped a while and admired the building. Later that day, huh. I cut rocks every day, but I couldn't own such a beautiful building. If only I was a wealthy man. Rejoice! Oh, said a voice from the sky. For your wish shall be granted. Who was that even? I couldn't see anybody. It is me the spirit of the mountains The stone cutter didn't believe the voice and he left for his house Later to his surprise I must be dreaming, don't I? He found his little hut turned into a beautiful palace, same as the wealthy man. Though he began to enjoy the luxuries of the house, he had to work hard for the living. Only if I could be a prince with a lot of servants and wealth. Rejoice. for your wish shall be granted immediately a lot of servants were next to him with a golden cedar chair that held a golden umbrella and they carried him back home The stone cutter had everything he needed. But still, he was not content. Later, he looked at the sun. Oh, spirit of mountains, I wish I could be the sun. He became the sun and shone brightly. Not so late. This little cloud covers me, the sun. He should be the most powerful. He wished and he turned into a cloud. He was able to flood all the places and everything on his way. but the mountains these mountains stay still no matter what 
O oh, spirit of mountains, here I wish. Neither the sun nor the rain would move him even an inch. But who is that? A stone cutter? An ordinary man is powerful than anybody. I wish to turn back to my human form. Later, the stone cutter realized how foolish he was and learned that staying content is the real happiness. Kids, what have you learned from the story? The stone cutter in this story always thought that something was better than him but towards the end he realized that he was wrong so kids remember that you are always special far far away in china a very long time ago it was the rule of the emperor wu the emperor owned a beautiful castle that had a boundless garden that even the gardener doesn't know its end. There lived a little nightingale that sang most melodious songs, which was enjoyed by everyone but the king. Emperor! Emperor! An important message. The Emperor of Japan would be visiting us tomorrow. That would be pride. Provide him the best welcome that nobody could ever give. As per the Emperor Wu's order, the Japanese Emperor was treated so well during his visit. And when he was about to leave, he had come across the Nightingale and he was mesmerized by its songs. A few days later, I order you to read the letter that we have received from the Emperor of Japan. The days I spent in China was some of the best days of my life. I was honored by the respect you gave and more than anything, the song of the nightingale from your garden took me to a different world. A nightingale in my garden? Why haven't I heard of it yet? The emperor ordered the soldiers to bring the nightingale to him. Such a beautiful voice you have got, my little bird. The emperor kept the nightingale in his palace and enjoyed its songs day and night. Both the nightingale and the emperor became close friends. One day... Emperor! Emperor! I have a present from the emperor of Japan! The present was a beautiful toy of a nightingale that sang songs whenever one puts a key through it. I like this toy so much, I order you to place it in my room. As the king started listening to the toy, the nightingale flew away from the palace and never returned. And one day, even the toy stopped working. Emperor Wu, I have checked with the toy makers all over the world, but no one could able to restore it. The emperor began to realize his fault. That he shouldn't have left his friend alone over a toy. Days passed by and the emperor turned sick as he didn't eat anything. Only the song of the nightingale that he loved could save him, else we wouldn't have our king with us 
any more, said the doctor, when everyone was worried. Ah, my friend, my friend. Emperor went to meet the nightingale and the nightingale came flying to him. Tears of joy rolled down his cheeks and from there the nightingale and the emperor remained together as friends ever after. Kids, what have you learned from the story? The emperor in the story suffers a lot on losing his real friend over a fake toy. So kids, always stay together with your best friends and never lose them at any cost, ever. Beyond the oceans, beyond the seas, beyond rivers, lived a frightful giant on the Java island. He was so tall, gigantic, and his each finger weighed a watermelon. It sounded like thunder whenever he walked around the island. In the same island, there lived a poor mother and her daughter, Tutu Mu, who sold wooden logs for the living. The mother prepared a huge pot of sweet porridge for giant every day, despite her poverty, as the giant has threatened to swallow her daughter. One day, Sweetheart, Mama is going to market. Lock the door and stay safe. Okay, Mama. Come back soon. I'm afraid that the giant would be here. Don't worry, Tutu Mu. I have prepared his sweet porridge, so the giant won't disturb you. Okay, Mama. Come back soon anyway. And please get me my shiny long hairpin. Sure, sweetie. I will get it for you. The mother left to market. And later that day, Tutu Mu, where are you? Your your porridge is outside. Leave me alone. Ha ha ha! All right, already. The giant drank the big pot of sweet porridge in a gulp. <sighs> that night... Mama? Why you look so dull? What's the matter with you? Sweetheart, today I could make money that's only sufficient for preparing the giant's porridge. We cannot have anything for tomorrow's breakfast. It's okay, Mama. My stomach is full. The situation continued to be the same for the following days. It's okay, Mama. I feel no hungry. Tutu Moo and her mother began to starve. One fine day, when the mother left Tutu Moo at her home, ah, what a pleasant smell! I'm going to have just one ounce, and the giant is not going to find any way. Before even she could realize, she has completed one quarter of the sweet porridge. Oh! My God! What have I done? She ran into the house and latched the door.
and when the giant saw the pot, Who dared to touch my porridge? Do do moo! Where are you? Come out! Come out! Leave me alone, please! Come out! The giant slammed open the door and grabbed Tutu Moo outside with his long hand, swallowed her and started walking away. Please, giant! Leave me! Leave me! Ah! We yelled Tutu Moo, stuck inside the giant's stomach. Tutu Moo remembered her shiny long hairpin. She started poking him hard with her sharp hairpin. Stop that! Stop that! The giant tripped and fell to the ground. And Tutu Moo came out, tearing his stomach. From then, Tutu Mu and her mother had more than enough money for themselves and they ate sweet porridge every morning. Kids, what have you learned from the story? Tutu Mu in the story, though she was a little girl, she thought wisely at the right time and thereby she was able to save herself from a great danger. So kids, remember. Timely thinking will save you from any situation. Do you wish to see a lot of stories here? Then please subscribe this channel. Along with your friends and family, enjoy all the videos of Magic Box. Magic Box English, a place to learn a lot of good things with happiness. Don't forget to subscribe.